These next 10 comic books spiked more than any others, and we're gonna tell you why. Another week of the hot 10 comic books and Jim Mint's on vacation. So we got Fire Guy Ryan in the casa. I never take a vacation, so I'll be here instead. Jim Mint, um, moving on on your turf. So let's see what happens next week. Hit the like and subscribe because at the list at number 10 is the first spec to jump from the trending list last week to number 10 on the hot 10 this week. We have... The Authority, issue number one, debuted in 1999, and we are seeing 9.8 record-breaking sales happening so quickly after the announcement that the rest of the grades can't keep up. Yeah, we're talking about The Authority, number one. This is the first issue out of the 12-issue run that was by Brian Hitch and writer Warren Ellis. Uh, it's a modern classic, apparently, now that we're seeing it on the hot list. They're going to get a movie, and I have never read this. I need to go out and track down The Authority. It's something I've been meaning to read for a while, but I never really needed to. Uh, but now now we have to, because we're apparently going to be talking about it for a while. A lot of these projects that James Gunn's making is for a larger general audience. But don't get it twisted. We definitely need our mature narratives. We need the next peacemaker type of show. And with the likes of the boys on television, keeping up with Amazon, it's going to be important that he can... Play with a team that will go the distance, one that is much more mature, more violent. Yeah, considering that he already made the Suicide Squad movie, too, it's logical to assume we need something newer, something different, and uh, the authority is definitely that team. I think the uh, the members of this team, too, have the potential to carry on forward and interact with members of the Justice League, for example. An increase of 800% in copies sold since this announcement landed, putting the 9.0 and 9.4 up with record-breaking sales. The 9.0 is up 108%, and the 9.4, 333%. We also had a 9.8 break a new record this week, going for $550, which is a 120% increase over its previous high from 2021. This isn't the only book that is seeing an increase in sales. We do have Midnighter. We do have Apollo, two classic members that made their first appearance in a completely different comic book. We're talking about Stormwatch issue number four. That book is seeing a bunch of record-breaking sales as well. That makes sense, too, because Midnighter and Apollo are kind of like the two. I would I would call them leaders, maybe most important characters on the Authority, so it makes sense that their first appearance is kind of treated separately. The 9.4 sold for 365. That's up 92%. The 9.6 has a brand new record-breaking sale of 270, up 43%. But it's all about the 9.8, so we have three different record-breaking sales, the highest being 599, which is an increase of 50% since the price was set back in May of last year for 400. Yeah, ever since uh, this James Gunn announcement last week, uh, it's kind of hard to keep up with all this stuff. So you might want to go uh, check out the Key Collector app. If you use code TOM101, you get a two-week trial for free. That's right. There's a thing called Key Alerts. These are notifications you can opt into when any news happens and the comics that are associated with them will be presented for you to consider and to learn about. Support the show. Utilize that code. Get access to the best comic book app ever. And at the list at number nine, we have Star Wars number one from 1977, could this be a case of everyone focusing over here, the DC area, when others are over here looking at the Marvel spec, when it's 50% down? This book's actually been on the hot list for a few weeks now, even predating the James Gunn DC stuff. Star Wars is kind of gearing back up. We've got Mandalorian Season 3 on the way, and this kind of this is kind of the book to get for Star Wars. you got the first appearance of pretty much all of the classic original trilogy characters. It is an adaptation of A New Hope, so it makes sense that you would see Luke Skywalker, Han Solo, C-3PO, R2-D2, Darth Vader, Stormtroopers, etc., etc., etc. They're pretty much all in here. The heights this book reached was $9,600 back in April of last year, but this month we saw a $3,400 9.8 sale. So with everyone buying DC books, but then at the same time, you have Mandalorian spec happening because of the trailer. You also have Ahsoka Tano on the minds of everybody. Ezra Bridger, Sabine Rand, Grand Admiral Thrawn in the distance. We are also seeing trailers that hint that we're going to see more of the flashbacks that's going to feature Anakin, possibly Obi-Wan. So this book at 3400 at a 9.8 is looking more attractive by the day. Members are probably buying it now before it goes up again. Yeah, it's not the worst time if you have the money to afford a book that's this expensive. When people like Tom said are focused on DC, when the overall comic market is relatively trending down, it might not be a bad idea to uh, snag Star Wars, especially because until until recently, Star Wars itself has been in kind of a low. There hasn't really been a whole lot of you know action around uh, the fandom, except for like Andor, which a lot of people kind of skipped. I still haven't gone back and finished it. I only watched the first couple episodes, but I really liked it. Well, I think the numbers are proving this hypothesis to be correct because below a 9.8, we are seeing a slew of sales trending upwards. So although the book is hot, 
I suspect that we're seeing the book trend up in copies sold and in price more now than ever because it's affordable. The 5.0 sold for 175, up 15% when you compare it to the last 12 months. The 6.0 is up 17% with a $210 sale. The 7.0 is hitting 231, that's up 2%. The 8.0 is selling for 334, that's 18% up. And then when you go higher than that, you got an 8.5 that hit 350, 12% over its year long average. 9.4s are hitting 650, that's only 8% above its last year average, but that's still an increase. And then the 9.6 just hit $1,200, which is 8% over its 12 month average. Holy smokes, there was a lot of books graded in one week. An addition of 37 copies were added to the census and one new 9.8, making the total 9.8 count 743. Next on the list at number eight, I suspect this book is hot because of the sales cycle and CGC. Yeah, we're talking Wolverine number one, his first solo series from 1982. We are seeing a, a pretty big increase in the amount of CGC slabs compared to last week when this book was also on the hot 10, which again, compared to Star Wars, which we just talked about, that's that's a lot of new books. That's an impressive turnaround. CGC seems like they're speeding up, catching up from the, uh, the kind of slump they were in during the pandemic. They mentioned that they hired a bunch of people. It takes, I imagine, at least like four to six months to train them to the abilities needed to process as much as the collector's community is sending them. We have an increase of 22 copies added to the census since we talked about this book last, making the total census count 20,000 and 54 slabs on the CGC census. The 7.0 hit $112. That's 26% over its recent 12 months. The 8.0 hit 120, 2% over. The 8.5 hit 140, that's 7% over. The 9.0 sold for 198, that's 21% over. And the 9.6 hit 384, that's 30% over its recent 12 months. So we do have Wolverine spec, but there is no Deadpool news to talk about. And this is like the third week in a row where the only news we have is there training they're like working out i looked there's there's nothing there's not a lot of uh new, it's still early in the in the production cycle of this movie they haven't even started filming it they're still getting in shape which again is all all that comes up when you look for wolverine news there's also like you know fan casting Ooh, we want this guy to play wolverine we want this guy to play wolverine in, in the future you know after hugh jackman so yeah there's no there's no news there's no rumors of driving sales of this book but i think people are just that excited for the eventuality of seeing the x-men in the mcu alongside all the other marvel characters i think the cgc books are coming in very quickly, and we're seeing the ramifications of that. So although the book is hot and it's trending, I suspect it's because there's more availability. When these go to auction, we're seeing 7-0s, 9-0s, 8 I mean, these are lower graded copies where there's an abundance of them that exist. The 9-0, there are 1,722 in existence. So it makes sense that we would see more sales. I'm excited to see what happens when we get any type of news. That's true. And speaking of news, I was surprised at how few uh, James Gunn related books are actually on this list. We've 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 talked about three so far, and only one of them was tied to the uh, DC announcements from James Gunn. We've had two Marvel books since then. But let's get to the next one because that that is that is DC. House of Secrets 92 at the list at number seven. Birdie writes in goodness. We have the first appearance of Swamp Thing, and I think it was one of the most shocking announcements considering that DC already tried to release a Swamp Thing show that was canceled during production. That's true. That Swamp Thing show on the DC Universe app, uh, that, that was in 2019. It was not not that long ago, but yeah, it did, it did get canceled. Uh, it makes me wish that they had waited a little longer, that we might have gotten that as an HBO Max original series versus uh, something that just kind of dropped and died on this uh, platform that doesn't even exist anymore. We did have an 8.0 breaker record this last week, selling for $4,000, which is 5% over its previous record set back in 2021. The 4.0 is up 9%, selling for 1,090. The 5.5 sold for 1,400, 2% over. The 6.0 hit 1,850, 12% over. And the 6.5 hit 1,638, which is 1% over. This book is so respected and so tough and high grade that despite having a failed attempt already, it seems like such a safe investment. Yeah, we haven't seen a whole lot of sales above a 9.0 in the last few months at least, and when we look at the 37 new slabs that we've gotten since the last time this book appeared on the hot list back in December, none of the slabs are in high grade. They're all in grades that we don't track. There are 129 9.0s that exist, and someone grabbed one this month in February for $4,760. That's less than $1,000 for a full grade point bump up from 8.0 to 9.0. I think someone got a screaming deal. The 9.2, in which there are 71 copies, sold back in December. We covered it, hit the subscribe button for $9,000. And someone 
earlier that year in June, pay 9,900 for a 9.4. There's only 42 copies of that book. It gets real interesting once you get into the higher grades. 9.6, there's only 27 of those graded at a 9.6 CGC. The last sale was for $30,000 back in September. And then when you get higher up than that, the 9.8, there are only three of those. There are only three in existence. We haven't seen one come to market since September 2021 when it hit 90K. This one surprised me. This is going to be the last hot 10 before the release of Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is the only Ant-Man related book that's on this list, which is you know, it's pretty surprising considering how often we see other books appear on the Hot 10 right before their movie comes out. We're talking about Marvel premiere 47, the first appearance of Scott Lang as Ant-Man in costume, of course. You got the first appearance of Darren Cross. You got the first appearance of Cassie Lang, all of who are going to be in this movie. Trifecta. The only person that we need in this comic book is Kang to really make it a perfect situation. And this book has been hot for so long because of the, I think, Cassie Lang spec. And the hype for Ant-Man, I just am not feeling it as much compared to Black Panther. What about you? Yeah, it's it's uh, it's really weird. James Gunn kind of came out of nowhere and popped the balloon of Ant-Man anticipation, I guess. Anticipation, if you will. Uh, we're not seeing that anywhere on this list. This is this is it. This is it for Ant-Man. He's not even on the top five of, of this list this week. It's a little disappointing. By the time you guys see the next Hot 10, probably with Jem Mint back here in the other seat, uh, Ant-Man will have hit theaters by then, so we'll see how it performs after the movie releases. Well, the 9.8 this book reached was 2250 in December 2021, so it's been a little bit, but the book is down by half. The last GPA sale was set in January of this year for $1,056. A lot of movement in all grades below a 9.8, however. The 7.5 sold for 165, 21% over its recent 12-month average. The 8.0 is up 18%, selling for 185, 8.5s are going for 180, 9% over. The 9.0 is selling for 220, 5% over. Similar to the 9.2, also 5% over, selling for 250. And then when you look at the 9.4, that just went for 345. That's a 13% increase over its recent 12 month average. And we have a 9.6 hitting 500 even, 8% over its recent 12 months. We're seeing red carpet premiere pictures. Brian Michael Bendis taking pictures with Dominique Thorne was pretty cool. However, I want to know what the community thinks. I think the marketing was a little lackluster. The hype wasn't there. The MODOK reveal wasn't what I think it needed to be. Yeah, and I really don't, it's not necessarily entirely their fault. I don't think they could have anticipated James Gunn coming out and the DC announcements landing with such a huge splash that it did. So we'll have to wait and see for the actual movie. And next at the list at number five, I think you and I are in a completely different mindset about wanting this to happen. Yeah, and I'm aware I'm in the minority. I'm aware that people in the comment section like to give me crap for hating on this character. We're talking about Omega Men, issue number three from 1983, the first appearance of Lobo. Jason Momoa getting all hyped up. The anticipation for James Gunn to release a slate of announcements that was going to shock a lot of people. It did, but Lobo nowhere to be found. And I think the prices are now seeing the similar effects that Wolverine earlier on the list is having. A lot of newly graded comics are hitting the market while the book is hot, and we're starting to see a price adjustment. I'm so happy. I can't stand Lobo. Lobo annoys the hell out of me. Dude, and this could seeing, be the next Deadpool over at DC, sure, man. Sure, Deadpool also annoys the hell out of me. And seeing people like spec so hard on this book in the last few months, it's been on the list for 12 straight weeks, yep. which is bonkers. It hasn't hit this low on the list, however. I don't know if ever, let alone recently. Well, we're seeing an increase of 27 copies added to the census in under a week. This book was at number two on the Hot 10 last week. And we have 9.8s. A brand new count, an increase of 11 copies added. Hot damn. So yeah, let's talk about 9.8s for a minute. The record high sale was uh, just a few months ago back in December for $462. However, last week we saw a uh, recent high sale, 395, 19% over its 12-month average. However, this sale did take place two days before James Gunn clarified that there is not a Lobo project happening in the uh, near future. Unless he's going to be introduced in something else in DC, which I think people are hoping for. Until we find out, I don't know, that Jason Momoa found out he's actually going to be portraying Swamp Thing. Or maybe he's actually Damian Wayne. He's excited about something. We saw that video last last week, I think it was, maybe the week before, when you and Jem uh, went over his like, woo! He was whooping and hollering in that building. He got some good news from James Gunn and Peter Safran. I personally don't think you get that excited for Lobo, no matter how much you like the character personally. I think he might have gotten some more different news. I don't think they would have told him you're going to be Lobo without announcing a Lobo project in any way. 
on this first wave of DC movies and TV shows? Well, 9.8 and 9.6, there were five sales that beat the 12-month average this week. 8.0, selling for $90, is still up 22%. 8.5 did the same, selling for $90 as well. The 9.2 hit 130. The 9.4 hit 140. That's a 37 and 36% increase over the last 12 months. The 9.6 hit 170. That's almost 20%. And the 9.8, although it hit 395, this did take place two days before. And that puts the overall average over the last 12 months selling at $332. So yes, it's up 19%. We were seeing this break nearly the $400 marker again, and it doesn't look like it's going that way. And there was a more recent sale after this $395 sale, a more recently hit, hitting $355. So even since then, it's dropped a little bit. What's interesting about Lobo, actually, when I was doing research for this last night, I found an interview with Tom King from a couple days ago where he reveals that Lobo was originally going to be the second lead character in his Supergirl series, which just Could got announced. Could you imagine if that happened? I would not have loved that book anywhere near as much as I do. I love Supergirl, and you all need to go read that, like but right now. With the Supergirl craze post the announcement, ooh, can you imagine? Maybe if- they'll slip Lobo into it. And make <laughs> No, don't do that. <laughs> Please don't ruin that. That book is perfect. Don't ruin it by putting Lobo in it. Dear God. Speaking of Damian Wayne at the list at number four, we have his first cameo appearance in Batman 655. There's a whole lot of Damien in this book, though. We do have a 17 sale count for 9.8s since the announcement, and this book has propelled itself from the trending list to the hot 10 in addition to the authority. Yeah, now that we're on the uh, in the top half of this list, too, we're going to see a lot of these books have like stupid high numbers of copies sold. 17 9.8s sold. We're not going to get into every single one of those, but that's a lot. This book was averaging $192 for a 9.8. This week, we saw a $450 sale. This book is going to break 500 I bet. Yeah, the overall, the all-time record high for a 9.8 is $499. So, uh, yeah, I would not be surprised at all to see this hit 500 There's actually one on eBay right now asking for 500 by now. So some members are getting this a bit cheaper. I mean, we're talking one week after the announcement. We saw a sale for $345 for this first appearance of Damian Wayne because of the focus on... The Bat family, specifically a Robin, we have yet seen hit the screen. True. A lot of people are disappointed that we're not going to get a James Gunn Nightwing project in any way. But, but we still could. There's time. Yeah, I think I think there's plenty of time for that. Don't don't worry. Yeah, we also have newsstand sales to report on. We have a 9.2 selling for 150. The last time it sold was in January for $94 as the record. That's an increase of 60%. The 9.6 last sold in December for $56, up 418% selling for $290 this week. We also have a 1 in 10 variant for this book done by Adam Kubert, which is seeing a pretty big increase in sales this week. We had a 9.2 hit $112, 56% over its recent 12-month average. There's a 9.4 that went for 125 That's up 2%. Not a lot, but still counts. 9.6, $280, 53% increase over its recent 12-month average. And then a 9.8 just hit $590, 42% over its 12-month average. An increase of 2,078% in copies sold week over week. It's an understatement to say that this announcement really landed with the collector's market. But I also think that the collector's market really needed this type of news. Members were getting antsy. They want to buy comics. They want to buy key comic books. And they've just been waiting for this type of groundbreaking news that they can spec on and start purchasing books that they love. That's true. This is the most recent book from the DC announcements to hit this list this week. It's also a very classic modern run that I really need to get my hands on. I have not read the original Grant Morris and Damian Wayne stuff. I'm very much looking forward to cracking into that. I may have messed up. You did. Let's get into this because I'm going to give you crap for it. <laughs> number three on the list, The Last of Us, American Dreams, number one. The first appearance of The Last of Us in comics. One of the best shows on television right now. And there was a 9.8 available on eBay that I put an offer in. And I thought it fair to put the record-breaking sale offer, which was 1250 I got countered 1380 and declined, and you got pissed. True. I didn't know you got countered for that. I was going to tell them to go higher and offer whatever you need to to get your hands on this book because I still think it's going to go up. We have seen it go up. There is a new record now. It is uh, The new record is $1,275 versus 1250 so it's not the greatest record-breaking That's sale. That's 2% and it matters, dude. It does matter. We've it's going waiting. up and I think it's going to keep going up and I think you may have missed the boat there. It was on 8.0 sale, increased 106% selling for $278 this week. But this is where it gets really interesting. This book started its rise about a month ago, the premiere of the show. It's been about four weeks. And 
With only 72 copies graded at 9.8, there have only been four public sales that we've witnessed. That means that members are likely agreeing with you. They have a 9.8 and they're holding. Hang on to it. There have been no new 9.8s added to the census since we talked about this way back a month ago. It's there's barely any copies at being added to the census. It's been on the list for four straight weeks. And yeah, there's been no increase in CGC census counts since we talked about it or since you and Jem talked about it last week when it hit number one, by the way. It's a pretty, it's a pretty big book. It's a great show. It's the, my favorite show I've seen in a very long time. I don't want it to be over, but I feel like we're probably about halfway done. We really enjoy making comic book themed content for the best community in the world, the comic familia. And if you want to support us directly, just give us an excuse to send you comics. Our box is $34.99 plus shipping, and we send out four to five comics to you every single month. Join the mystery mail call, comictom101.com. Link is in the description. And Ryan, you're sitting in front of a beautiful slate of the exclusives we're sending out in February. You got Gargoyles, number one, by Johnny Desjardins. That's correct. You got Grimm, number six. By In Hyuk Lee. Yeah. And then we got Ninja Funk, issue number two, by Natalie Sanders, doing a self-slash-Adam Hughes homage. One per box. We have variants of each issue going out at random. Join the community and at the list at number two. When you want a book but can't afford it, this is the next best thing. I guess you're right, yeah. If you if you saw the announcement for a Swamp Thing movie and you got excited, like I did, uh, you might want to look and see what sort of keys you could purchase. And you look up his first appearance in House of Secrets and you go, holy smokes. Can't afford that. What's the next best thing I can get with less amounts of money? <laughs> That's the Swamp Thing number one. We're seeing it here at number two on the list, debuting in 1972. You got the first appearance of the technically the second Swamp Thing, Alec Holland, plus the first appearance of Anton Arcane, his big arch nemesis. You got the first appearance of Matt Cable. It's just a it's just an interesting book with a lot of first appearances that might be more relevant depending on what direction the Swamp Thing movie actually goes. It just demonstrates it perfectly. Some books are great spec because they're more attainable. And they're more affordable. We have multiple grade points from 4.5 to 9.2 to discuss and an increase of copies sold of 200%. The 4.5 hit 181, up 3%, and the 5.5 can't keep up. It sold for less, 174 for an increase of 18%. That shows how much people want this book. The 6.5 sold for 220, 29% over its recent 12 months. The 7.0, 250, 33% over its recent 12 months. The 7.5 hit 259, 11% increase. The 8.0, 350, that's 27% over, and the 8.5 broke $400. Selling for 405, that's 19% over. I'll take the last two off your hands. 9.2 just hit 550. That's a 26% increase. And then finally, we have a 9.2 hitting $669, 31% over its recent 12 month average. I'll remind the community we talked about it earlier Star Wars 1 and 9.8 had a more than 50% drop. So when you look at the 9.8 of Swamp Thing number one, the record high was set for $7,000 in December 2021. November of last year, although it's down, it sold for 5750 Way less of a hit than some books that we've discussed, and there's only 35 9.8s in existence. Yeah, when you look at that Star Wars number one, there's over 740 9.8s. So you got a little bit of a supply and demand situation. There's more of them, which would drive the price down, whereas you got 35 here of Swamp Thing number one, which is why the price is not that far down. It's like a little over $1,000 less than its all-time high. It's probably going to approach that number here the closer we get to the movie. I want to hear from the community in the comment section below. Week one of announcements. What did you expect to be leading the Hot 10 list? And did you think it would be the book that made number one? Booster Gold, number one from oh. 1986. Oh, Number one on the Hot 10 and the last Trending 10 video we did. This right here is shocking, but I suspect because of the failed recent attempt that Swamp Thing had in the television show, I think it kind of like pulled from the excitement, which primed Booster Gold to shine. That's true. He stole the number one spot, just like he stole the superhero tech from the future to come back and try and not be a loser back in the heyday of superheroes. Booster Gold comes from the future, but he's a big time loser. So he goes and steals a bunch of superhero gear from the superhero museum, travels back in time to try and make a name for himself and feel cooler. This right here was being specced on prior to any announcements because members were thinking that this could be a prime candidate to get the peacemaker effect, an obscure character, a strange character made cool because of James Gunn's creativity. And we are seeing so much attention on a book that had dropped so significantly in the last year. 9.8s were averaging $383, <laughs> but not anymore. 
In the first week since the James Gunn announcement video, now that we know that there will be a Booster Gold TV series, we have seen several sales of this book. We did have two record breakers happen this week. An 8.0 sold for $82. That's 17% over its last record high back in 2021. A 9.4, meanwhile, hit 188. That is only 2% $3 over its previous record last year in 2022 of 185. The 8.5 sold for $91. That's up 36%. The 9.0 oh, hit 110, 51% over its recent 12 month average. And the 9.2, 12 different sales. The highest being 140. And that's an increase of 97%. And then you got the 9.6. We also had nine sales. All of them surpassed their 12 month average in the last week. The biggest one was $253, 101% increase over its $126 average. When we look at the census count, since we chatted about this book four days ago, there's been an increase of seven copies added to the CGC census. The average for a 9.8 was $383, and it's been blown past an increase of 88% with an all-new record-breaking sale of $721. Dollars. Yeah, that sale happened the very next day after the announcement of the Booster Gold TV series. We also had 13 sales. All happened in the last week, all of them higher than that $383 average. So people people are loving Booster Gold, and I'm very excited. I can't wait to see this happen. It's perfect for James Gunn. I think if this has happened 10 years ago, if James Gunn had decided to do a Booster Gold movie, it would have been Chris Pratt. Booster Gold, Chris Pratt, we would have seen the Star-Lord dance, dance scene with Guardians of the Galaxy. Like... This is perfect. I, I can't wait for James Gunn's, James Gunn's Booster Gold. It's going to work. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. And as always, geek responsibly. Enough said. Comic fam, look at this beautiful comic book, Swamp Thing in the distance. I mean, how cool would it be to see this cover from Swamp Thing's perspective? I mean, that's a mirror right there. That's cat hair right there. And bam. That's right. Carnivore Comics, Comic Tom team up. You can get this homage done. Point of view style by Gabriel Del Otto. We have virgin sets, and I'm gonna have them available for the first time from me this coming Tuesday for Valentine's Day on Whatnot. Link in the description. Bookmark the stream, and we'll see you there. We also have other videos for you to check out.